Good evening. We are joined by Heretics, who are coming off of their match against Edward Gaming. We'll begin with questions from the remote media and then take some questions in-house. We'll take the first question from Sierra. Yeah, um, hello. First off, commiserations on the loss. I, I know there was a lot of uh, emotion on stage and all of you put up a, a great fight and it was such a fun series to watch. And again, as rookies, it's an insane performance for you guys to have made it this far and done this well. So congratulations there. Um, my question goes to Boo. Um, on a few maps like Sunset and Abyss, both timeouts were understandably used very, very early on. What is it like as the IGL to have to carry the calling for these match the, for, for, sorry, sorry, the calling for these much needed game changing shifts in strategy when you're in the weeds of a comeback and unable to consult coaching staff. Oh, we need a translator. Oh, no, we don't. Go ahead. Oh, Go ahead. I'm fine. Um, when we use two timeouts early, I mean, they're being used for a reason. So we usually, you know, it's a wake up call. And they're used to start winning rounds. And when you start winning rounds and you get three, four rounds, that's an enemy pause. So that's when we can call, uh, sorry, talk again. So that's kind of the goal. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're not winning, we keep losing and there is no more timeouts. I don't know, you just do what you can. Like, keep doing your maximum. Um, keep remembering if they told something in attack pauses that might still help. Um, and yeah. I mean, just keep doing your best. Keep trying to find a solution or change something, do completely something completely different just to get that one round and maybe swing momentum. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Arnab. Hey, guys. It's like waste consideration on the loss. My question is for Neil Zinio. Uh, the map pool was uh, 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 as uh, during the uh, interview you said the map pool was favorable on for your both the team side, but I want to know from your perspective uh, from the initial analysis what do you think went wrong uh, in the maps uh, which uh, when the, uh, you guys were trying to come back again? Yeah, I think the map pool was very favorable for both teams. Right, it wasn't. Uh, the same situation as Shanghai when the you know Genji banned like two of our best maps. Like we still got to play our best maps, to be honest with you. So I mean Icebox would have been nice obviously, but that's what happens when you come from a lower bracket, you don't get that um <clears throat> you don't get that luxury. So it is what it is. Like there's such an up and down series from us. Um on Haven you got to see some of honestly like some of the best I've ever heard us play. On Haven, I was extremely proud. Weber was, you know, the same. It was honestly a joy to listen to, and the way we played on Haven was incredible. Moving on to Sunset, it was literally just a. I think they also played well, but we made them look very good. You know, if we lose like that on Sunset, there's uh, it's not all them. So that's it. that's all I'll say. It was just you know pressure. Understandably, we didn't uh, play to the level we should have, and then the other maps were just. You know, I think on the last map, especially on Abyss, they just played well macro wise. We lost some really close clutch rounds. We also won quite a few clutch rounds, but I keep saying it that Valorant comes down to consistency. And unfortunately for us, yet we just don't have the level of consistency yet to to close it out sometimes. And that's completely fine, you know, it's expected for a team this young. Thank you. Just to quick add on uh, to everyone in the team, uh, this is your first time playing in VCT so guys please don't be sad uh, much more come next year so yeah please keep smiling and work, try work hard and all of us for next season thank, thank you thank you thank you we'll take the next question from Sne from Sportskeeda uh, thank you yes uh, likewise guys commiserations on the loss I think despite the defeat today I think we can all agree that you guys had a phenomenal season my question goes to benji fishy so what are some of the things that this event has taught you that you'll carry with yourself for future matches uh, what have i learned i don't know i think for me i've improved um playing under pressure um just how to control my 
emotions while I'm playing. Obviously not after we've just lost a grand final, but during the game, um, I think I'm I've been pretty good at controlling my emotions. I think sometimes I got a bit excited during the game, um, but I think that's pretty natural. Uh, so yeah, I think I mean I don't know. It's always like you always learn something uh, about when you play when you play in front of this many people, and maybe I haven't realized like to the full extent yet, but I'm sure. Later on, when I look back and rewatch really stuff or just think about it, then I'll I'll take some stuff with me. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Ravish. Uh hey guys. Yeah, as everyone said, um, a tough day today, naturally, extremely so. Um, but to 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 try to ask on, on a different note, uh, my question goes over to Minibu. Um, I was going to ask, I believe, uh, it was, uh, on bind. You said something that I found was really beautiful. I believe you, I believe you looked at Benji and you said, I'm so proud to play with a player like you. Uh, could you speak a bit more to that too, considering just how the sentiment was wonderful, I found, and just talk to me a bit more about how you so deeply appreciate just the rest of your teammates too, because you know, I find that really struck me. I mean... We've been in like together for eight uh, months, and like uh, yeah, like everyone showed up to practice. They never were late, and we played together like for a long time. And uh, I know like Benji Fishy is like the guy that is in very tough situation, and like in the, that. High tense moment when you think that it's over, but like out, like he can pull out the things like from out of nowhere that like just go out to a five for deagle shots, headshots, and like boom, you win the round. And like out of nowhere, you get just like a big like energy power, like you hype up, like I don't know, like uh, I don't remember what was the round, but I think it was like. 3k or something i think it was on pistol yeah and uh yeah like he can just like make plays out of nowhere just go and tap them and like his reaction and movement is like the best i've ever seen in my life thank you thank you we'll take the next question from brandon at esports.gg thank you very much i uh, just want to say appreciate you guys facing the media here you know after the loss like that um so i'd just like to ask honestly whoever um, would like to answer just in terms of the narrative going forward. You know, the story all year has been, you know, you guys are fresh faces. You're looking to make a name for yourself in a me and on the global stage. You know, safe to say you did so. Um, would winning champions have kind of been the end to that story? Or how do you how do you view it? Do you think the story would have continued if you won? Or does it continue here after a tough loss? Just like to kind of see what your thoughts are in terms of that narrative going forward into next year, whoever would like to answer. I can take that one if you want. Uh... Yeah, for me, if we won today, trust me, there's no way we'd be slowing down. That's not going to happen with me, Weber, Nicholas at the helm. Like, there's no way. I think I said it in one of my previous... I've said it at some point, but my vision for this team was to create a team that keeps on winning, to create a, a dynasty in this game. I don't want to win just one Champions or one event and then never win one again. I want us to be at a point where when we're ready to win, we keep winning. And we came into this year to gain experience and... We've done that, but we've also created a, a family, you know, like these guys are all brothers now. And as a coach, like you can't ask for anything better than that. You know, it's a joy to be with them every single day and work with them every single day. And obviously the goalposts have moved now. Like we're not going to go into next year settling for less than what we did this year. Not saying it's going to be easy. It's obviously going to be tough, but yeah, like these guys have proven if they can do what they've done in less than a year what will happen next year and this team is always built for the future and it's not lucky that we've reached every or almost every grand final you know and beat some pretty incredible teams so for me like yeah it sucks to lose right now but this is just the beginning thank you we'll take the next question from pedro romero hey guys uh, likewise, as everybody else has been saying before me and uh, most presumably after me, um, tough luck on the, on the series. I mean, uh, plenty of times you guys have showed the unity and the togetherness that uh, Neil kind of 
alluded to in his most recent answer um still i mean on, on one hand i i understand that, you know coming off of a loss like this uh, and how you know sad it must be but on the other hand i don't understand because i'm not in the server i wasn't able to actually experience these feelings the point that what i'm trying to get it to is this um given that you guys have been able to work so hard play together for so long and reach to this point um when obviously a lot of things happen either good or bad but for each uh, of you guys in within the team i ask to you this um despite losing today despite coming in as the runners up in this event I want to ask you, what do you think is the one, the number one memory that you'll take uh, away from this entire year, not just focusing on champions, um, just in general for you? Uh, is no one answering? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I mean, for me, my favorite memory from... Was it this year or this whole event or this? This whole year. This whole year. Um, I mean, for me personally, um, I love grand final walkouts. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> the the individual walkouts I always find super cool. And champions, you had the concert. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of I don't know if it's a, a bad answer, but I don't know. I I just think the walkouts are super cool. So yeah. For me, I think it was qualifying to Madrid against Navi on kickoff because that's when I saw on everyone's faces that wow we can actually do it like we're actually that good because everything after that like I think everybody knew like from us yeah we can do this like we can go to Shanghai then we can go to finals same with champions but I think in there in kickoff nobody even us didn't understood fully what's the potential we knew that there is but we didn't know how big it is and when we qualified I think we realized so it was nice thank you uh we'll take the next question from rabia at jinx.tv um hey everyone so sorry for the loss today but you guys played amazing my question is kind of for everyone you guys are young and reaching the grand finals of such a big event is not easy especially in the first year would you like to? Would you guys like to share your thoughts about Boo's amazing, uh, amazing IGLing this whole season? Because it's a huge responsibility, and he took that so well. Can I go, guys? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think Boo is genius. You know, I like the way he leads the team. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie. Boo is not kind of IGL that. Tells you every single thing that you should do. He's just telling you to macro, which is makes sense, and he let you do. He let you do the micro. So I like the way how he IGL the team, and even outside of the game, like combined in game outside of the game, he's like a you know big boss with the coaches. So they're like the higher ups in my eyes. So we respect them, but. In game team, I respect Boo so much, you know, because I truly believe that he's like really clever person, even outside of the game. Like, yeah, that's it. I want to say that I think Boo is a reliable person inside and outside the game. Like, you can always count on him no matter what. He will, like, if you're all panicking, Boo will not panic. Uh, in real life, he always like doesn't panic. And he keeps control of the things he's doing. And I know it's just uh, really good, especially for young people to have a person who is going to be there to calm you down or going to hype you up. I don't know. I, just one word reliable for me. I think for me as well, it's a coach's dream to have someone like Boo. I mean, it's the same with every single one of these boys, I'm not going to lie, but... For Boo to do what he's done this year after the shit that we went through last year and also, you know, just the environment that we had and the amount of hate that he was getting externally, he didn't let it bother him. He just 
kept his head down, believed in himself and believed in me and Weber, even though, you know, we have crazy ideas. We we do crazy stuff, but he never questions it. He respects us and he respects every single one of the boys. And I think that's like what Ines said. He calls macro, but he also trusts everyone so much to do micro plays. And I think that is the vision that both me and Weber had in an IGL. Like we want someone that believes in the people around him and people that believe in him and now that he's got that this year, the you know, the sky's the limit for the bobber. Yeah, I think um this trust is a big thing. Like he trusts all of us um to you know give him ideas when he needs it or do certain things for him like just micro stuff and he's just like the overall big picture um like he like just controls the team so without him there would be no team um so yeah he's he's like a very important part of our team thank, thank you. you um uh, thank you so much and good luck for the next season thank you thank you we have a question from the room Hello, I'm Via from Nerditude. My question is for Benji Fishi. Uh, yeah. First of all, I'm sorry for the loss, but also big congratulations on getting all the way to the second place. Just want to ask for some words for your fans all over the world. I'm actually representing a Latin American media and you truly have fans everywhere who woke up at midnight to watch you and support you. Um. Yeah, I mean, obviously we lost and it sucks, but I hope people um can see you know what we've done and what i've been able to do from swapping to a different esport um changing kind of i mean not career paths but um changing to a different esport and you know getting this far i'm not done yet and i'm not going to be done for a, like a long a long time so i hope that by the time i'm done then i'll have some sort of dynasty um and hopefully it's for my boys so thank you for anyone that's been watching supporting anyone that's sending messages and everything so yeah thank you so much thank you we'll take the next question from fd news uh, there is a uh, sorry for the wait uh, uh, just leave me a moment and there is. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Team Reckless, to be here. And I know it's hard to be here in after the match, so I'm so sorry for the loss. Uh, I would like to uh, ask you to Neusinho, the coach. Um, taking in mind that uh, you your season ends with a top two here in in Baron Champions Seoul. And it's the first year of a long-term uh, project that the team are qualified for every three in international tournament and show the world what are capable for. And I would like to ask you your thoughts about it. Yeah, it's been an incredible year. It's obviously hard to express those words right now because it's it's been it would have been nice to have the the fairy tale and then right that's all it would have been um we created the team that everyone believed in and like i said earlier like we've created a family which to me is the most important thing because that's what's gonna be the foundations for us moving forward to create a dynasty like benji said right like we want to we want to go on a run we want to replicate this form we want to do better every single year and every single one of these guys are so hard working that it will happen we just need time um, and for us to get to so many finals this year is incredible. But also, for me, like getting to see how these guys have developed, not only in the game, but also outside of the game. We have a couple of boys who have never left their own country before, you know, like they've moved to a different city. They're away from their families, they're away from their friends. They're so young. One of them was in, in school doing exams halfway through the season. They've traveled to different countries, they've experienced different cultures, and it was all just part of getting experience. So for me, it's been a pleasure. And I know Weber is also very, very happy with it too. And again, it's just been nice to be able to travel around the world with such a good bunch of genuinely nice humans. You know, like every single day is a pleasure. So for me, I'm just excited for the future.
and that's what I want to focus on now, you know. Thank you so much, and I wish you guys a good 2025 season. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Fernando from Game Arena. Uh, thank you. Hi, guys. Sorry for the loss and congratulations on the season. My question was for Neil. Uh, my guy, uh, in 2022, you joined FBX as an analyst after the one Masters. Uh, and RITX believes in you to be the head coach of the project and franchise. Of course, last year wasn't easy, but what an amazing season in 2024. Uh, I want to ask you, at the start of the season, like before the games, before before kickoff, did you believe this team could achieve everything it achieved? And what are your expectations for this roster for the future, maybe the next, what, two years? I know some people will probably be like, yeah, that's bullshit. But yes, I did believe we could achieve this because I, it was like one of the first times throughout my entire career that um, an org has given me full control, Weber full control, like the staff full control of the roster. And, you know, I like to think that we knew what we were doing when we were putting the team together. Um, so just maybe it's just me being stubborn, but I knew exactly the vision that I had for the team. I shared the same vision with Weber, with Boo, with Benji. That's why they're stuck around after what I saw from the first, from the first, uh, you know, the first iteration of the team. So, yes, I did believe it. Did I believe that we would achieve it so consistently with such a young bunch of players? Maybe not, but I think like Boo said, once we qualified to Madrid, that was just like the the spark, you know. And I also didn't expect to I, I expected it to be a bit rougher, you know, with having um someone uh, like, you know, Wood not being with us because he's obviously so incredibly talented, we couldn't have him for the first portion of our season. So I knew that it would be t difficult, but we were so incredibly fortunate that someone was stupid enough to kick Mr. Patty Tech because obviously we got the goat so that made our season a lot easier and again it's just an extra person that's added to the family and having someone like Patty helped us an absolute shit ton so we would never have got here without him you know um, so yeah I believed in it having to get a, a standing it's not really a standing it's part of the team um, would have made things more difficult but yeah the TLDR is, yeah, I expected it, but like Boo said, when we qualified to Madrid, that was kind of the, the eye-opener. Holy shit, you know, we can we can do something incredible this season and the boys all believed in it and pushed in it and never stopped working, even though there was some very, very tough moments, some very stressful periods, and, you know, they pushed through it. Thank you very much, and good luck next season. Thanks. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Pedro Romero. Yes, um, I got. I I'd like uh to ask a question towards Woot. Um, obviously you are are not feeling uh the best right now, which obviously I understand. Just want to give you a simple question: How do you kind of look back on your season overall and your experience here in in Seoul in Champions, being being with this team, the highs, the lows, basically anything that comes to your mind. You know, um, if you have anything to say, if you don't, then I understand. And there is the one thing I can say. I'm really proud of my team. See you next year. There is nothing I can say more. Thank you. Uh, we'll take the next question from Sierra. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, my question is kind of jumping off some of the team narrative questions I've already been asked and looking forward to next year, like we mentioned. Uh, Champions 2025 will be in Paris. This can go to anybody. Does it add fuel to the fire or the desire to lift the trophy even more, considering it will be hosted in your region next season? Or what does that mean to you guys? It doesn't matter. Yeah, for me, it, it doesn't really matter where we play, honestly. Like, I think we've gained a pretty cool following over in Asia. So, I think it's cooler to travel somewhere else outside of Europe. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. We'll take the next question from WoW Esports. Okay. <clears throat> so, sorry for the loose, but our Chinese fans still like you very much. Uh, so would you come to streaming on BDBD? Would a uh, question for Wood? Yeah, in off season, I will make so much stream in the BDBD. I'll probably 
yeah, I, I will do it. I can't say it, but yeah, I will. Thank you. And we'll take the last, oh, we'll take the last question from Ashley Kang. Um, hey guys, this is Ashley Kang of Horizon Esports. Like everyone else mentioned, I'm really sorry about your loss, but I look forward to your future legacy. I have a question to Benji. Um, Benji, um, you just mentioned how special this moment is, given that you've also come from another esports. And today's atmosphere was very exciting. There were fans from Korea, China, Spain, you know, um, Japan, America, Europe, everywhere, and you can definitely feel and taste that this is a growing scene. And this happened in Korea, which is dominated by existing traditional esports like StarCraft and League of Legends. From your perspective of a player that has played in other esports before, what makes Valorant so special? And why should we be excited for the future of Valorant and the dynasty you might possibly build there? That's a very good question. Um, I mean, I think Valorant is an esport in general, like, for me, I I love how in depth it can get. Um, like if I compare it to Fortnite, like sure it can get in depth, but when it's like a grand finals at Champions, um, it doesn't really get much more than that. Like for me, I've, I haven't experienced anything like it. Like having to think and just like how much we you have to practice. It's way more than what I had before. Um. I don't know it's just it's just the game that I love and you're never you're never gonna be like perfect you know it's impossible to be perfect in a game like this um you can't always do everything right you're always gonna learn from mistakes in every single game you play and every single day that you practice and I didn't really feel that when I was on Fortnite um I don't know I really like improvement and noticing myself improve and I can feel myself improving every day on Valorant. So that's why I love it the most. And yeah, I think it's just the the scene and just Valorant in general is just going to keep growing. And I hope to be um, with all my boys as the best team in the world for when that happens. Thank you so much. Keep seeing you. Thank you. Team Heretics, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it.